Well, good morning, beloved, and happy Monday. Happy last Monday of 2020. And I pray that God will give us in 2021 a fruitful, strong faith in hope with abounding love and wisdom. And uh, so this last week of uh, 2020, I want to uh, share a few mission trip stories with you. And today, uh, uh, the story from about 02, summer of 02, when uh, we went and started up a, a church in a village called Nwango. Nwango means leopards. And it was quite a distance from Iganga. You know, our drill was to have a pastor's conference there in the morning, and then every, and in the afternoon we'd take teams of pastors out, visit in a village nearby, at the end of the week start a new church, have service after the visitation late in the afternoon, and then at the end of the week start a new church. Well, this place in 02, July of 02, they wanted, it was real far, it's about three and a half hour drive. So we couldn't get out there and back in time, so they planned a big one day witnessing uh, event and then big service and then start the church the next day. So, the end of the pastor's conference, a team of pastors had already gone up there and got the place ready, cleared a big area for the big service, outdoor service. And we showed up there with a lot of teams. I had to leave kind of early in the morning, and we spent all day uh, witnessing hut to hut, leading people to Christ and telling them we're going to have a big service at that cleared out area and just listen for the music. Well, the other thing that was introduced in Uganda in 02 were cell phones. And so the pastors were kind of, few of them had cell phones and... This was when uh, someone, we don't know who it was, some team ahead of us, brought over a big keyboard, electronic keyboard, and donated. And they rented a generator and some speakers. So while we were out there visiting, leading people to Christ, sharing Christ, we could hear this guy trying to figure out that keyboard. And uh, we knew it was a baby boomer that donated it because they had recorded in that keyboard the uh, music of the late 60s and early 70s. Beatles, <laughs> Rolling Stones, Beach Boys, Monkeys, Elton John, all of those guys, had, they had songs, and he would just hit a key and one of those songs would start playing. Well, they didn't know what those songs were. They thought they were Christian songs, I guess, from our churches. But it was funny because as we'd be sitting in somebody's hut, talk, telling them about Christ, asking them if they were ready to pr pray to receive Christ, all of a sudden you'd hear, you know, the Rolling Stones, I can't get no satisfaction or something like that blaring out there in, the, in that village. It was kind of funny. And uh, I remember one time getting ready to have someone pray, and all of a sudden Elton John came on, Rocket Man. And I thought, oh, good grief. Well, we had led a lot of people to Christ, but of course, privately in your home, accepting Christ is one thing. Confessing Him publicly is something entirely different. And so when we gathered everybody together kind of late in the afternoon, about four o'clock for the big service, everybody was there. Boy, they were playing that different Beatles song. Were, people were coming. And, uh, and they had built for me this, cut down some trees and some logs, like a platform, it was about five feet off the ground with logs in between like a cattle guard. And I was standing up there just kind of balancing, <laughs> preaching, and I'll never forget, I preached from Haggai 2.7. The Lord is shaking the nations, and the desire of the nations shall come. I was preaching that message from Haggai 2.7. Of course, that's the line in uh, Hark the Herald Angel Sing. So, preached the message, gave the invitation. Good grief, there was 300, 400 people uh, out there three or four hundred people in this clearing and uh, gave the invitation. Won't you come to Christ, the desire of the nation? He is who you've been longing for. Come to Christ. Who will be the first? And I saw the guy walk over to the keyboard out of the corner of my eye and I thought, oh no, what song 
Is he going to play for the invitation of this great Billy Graham open, you know, air uh, crusade we were having? I was hoping just as I am, but I thought, oh no, what's going to come out? And he punched a key and Silent Night started playing. <laughs> Amen. But here it was, July, on the equator, and uh, Silent Night started playing. And I thought, oh, how appropriate is that? And so I just kept pleading. And all of a sudden, here came one man with his family. I remember him in their hut. Here he came with his wife, with his children, and he walked up right up there to that that uh, platform, and then here came another, and then another, and uh, and then a lot of people started coming. I learned later that first man that came forward, his name was Nicholas, and I thought, Amen. Saint Nicholas came to Christ as a Silent Night was being played. Well, they started counseling, and people started getting happy, and they started dancing, and they started playing. <laughs> music from the late 60s and 70s they didn't know and man they had a celebration well we left about seven o'clock at night by the time we got back it was almost midnight and the cell phone one of those pastors rang and they said they are still dancing and more have come to christ the next day we opened up nawongo baptist church and uh, it was a great, and Nicholas gave his testimony as the first person that came to Christ. Well, every time I hear Silent Night, I think of the birth, not only of Jesus Christ, but the birth of Nawongo Leopard Baptist Church in Nawongo, Uganda. And so may uh, the memories of not only what God did in 2020, but what God has done all in our past encourage us with the promises that He has made. More are coming to Christ in 2021 than did in 2020 for the glory of Jesus Christ and for our joy and strength. Amen and hallelujah.